Um, good afternoon. Uh, in a short while, we will be joined uh, by Dr. Cesar Nunez, the director of the UN AIDS office here in New York. He's here to speak to you um, in advance of World AIDS Day. And obviously today also uh, UN AIDS released its annual report. Uh, I have a travel announcement to share with you. Uh, the Secretary General will travel to Addis Ababa. Ethiopia to take part on um, first uh, on December 1st in the sixth session of the African Union UN annual conference, and he will leave uh, later this evening. Uh, discussions will be co-chaired by the chairperson of the African Union, Musa Faki Mohammed, and the Secretary General. Throughout the day, they will discuss progress on the implementation of cooperation frameworks between the two organizations. They will also assess joint action and challenges linked to peace, security, development, human rights, and the impact of climate change on the African continent. While in Addis Ababa, the Secretary General is also scheduled to meet with Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed of Ethiopia, as well as President Saleh Wark Zude of Ethiopia. Uh, the Secretary General is expected back in York this Friday. Um, he also addressed via video message today the 17th Internet Governance Forum, which is also taking place in Addis Ababa. He said that while technologies are transforming lives and livelihoods, they're also outpacing regulation and worsening inequalities. The future of the digital must be human-centered, he said, adding, adding that this glo his global digital compact aims to deliver on universal connectivity, human-centered digital space, and the safe and responsible use of data. The Secretary General also underscored that we need to keep working for a safe, equitable, and open digital future that does not infringe on privacy or dignity. His full remarks have been shared with you. Uh, you will see that a bit earlier this morning, we issued a statement in which we welcomed the donation of 260,000 metric tons of fertilizer from the Russian Federa from Russian Federation producers that were stored in European ports and warehouses. This will serve to alleviate the humanitarian needs and prevent catastrophic crop loss on the African continent, where it is currently planting season. Today, a shipment of over 20,000 metric tons of fertilizer left the Netherlands on a World Food Program chartered vessel, the uh, motor vessel Greenwich, uh, which is destined for Malawi, and it will get to Malawi after docking in Mozambique. This is the first of a series of shipments of fertilizers destined uh, for a number of countries on the African continent in the coming months. The shipment will take about 30 days uh, to arrive in the port of Bera in Mozambique. From there, it will be transported overland to, Moz to Malawi. This fertilizer donation initiative is part of the agreement signed in Istanbul on July 22nd to address global food insecurity and to ensure the unimpeded exports of critical food and fertilizer from Ukraine and the Russian Federation to world markets. The Secretary General thanks the government of the Russian Federation, Malawi, and the governments of the Netherlands in close coordination with the European Union for their willingness to enable this critical humanitarian shipment of fertilizer by WFP for global food security. The UN is continuing intense diplomatic efforts with all parties to ensure the unimpeded exports of critical uh, food and fertilizer from both Russia and Federation and Ukraine that are exempt from sanctioned regimes and uh, to the world markets. As you know, fertilizers play a key role in food systems. 50% of the world's population depend on agricultural products that are produced with the help of mineral fertilizers. Since 2019, fertilizer prices have increased by 250, excuse me, by 250%, which has produced a fertilizer crunch that is pricing farmers out of production, especially smallholder farmers from the developing worlds. Nitrogen fertilizer shortages this year could result in a production loss next year of 66 million tons of staple crops, such as maize, rice, and wheat. That's enough to feed 3.6 billion men, women, and children, uh, which is almost half of humanity, and enough to feed them for a month. Reconnecting fertilizer markets is a critical, excuse me, reconnecting fertilizer markets is a critical step to ensure global food security for 2023, and we will continue to make every effort with all parties to achieve this goal. Um, and uh, linked to, um, just a note uh, to underscore the importance of fighting food insecurity, 
The Secretary General today announced, is announcing the appointment of Rina Gilani of Australia as the UN Famine Prevention and Response Coordinator. Up to 222 million women, uh, 222 million women, men, and children are projected to face acute food insecurity this year, and multiple famines are looming. The situation in the Horn of Africa is especially concerning, with millions of lives at risk. To address the situation, the coordinator will lead and organize a cohesive system-wide response to rising food insecurity, as well as drought and famine in the Horn of Africa and beyond. She will work closely with humanitarian and development partners and the at the regional and global levels, as well as regional bodies and governments, to ensure coordinated approach to preventing the worst impacts of food insecurity resulting from climate-induced disaster and other causes. Ms. Gilani brings over 25 years of wide-ranging experience in international affairs, having served in many countries and across many fields, including humanitarian affairs, child protection, refugee assistance, human rights. She's currently the Director of Operation Advocacy for uh, the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, and you may have seen her um, brief the Council a number of times. Also, in terms of financial contributions, um, Coincidence, but uh, I want to thank our friends in Malawi today for their full payment to the regular budget. It takes us up to 137 fully paid up member states. Um, Gare Pedersen just briefed the Security Council this morning on uh, Syria and the escalatory dynamics that are taking place in that country, which he labels worrying and dangerous. I won't uh, read the whole note, given that you heard him and you just spoke to him. Um, earlier today, uh, we issued a statement in which the Secretary General strongly condemned al-Shabaab's latest attack on the Villa Reyes Hotel in Mogadishu that resulted in multiple casualties. He said he is saddened that Somali continues to be plagued by such heinous acts of terrorism and calls for the perpetrators to be held to account. The Secretary General expresses his condolences to the family of the bereaved and wishes a speedy recovery to the injured. He reiterates that the UN stands firmly with the government and people of Somalia against terrorism and violent extremism. Quick update from our team in Indonesia, where, as you know, um, the uh, population is still, reeling, is still feeling the impacts of the earthquake that struck West Java last Monday. The UN Population Fund there has been supporting reproductive health through the distribution of 350 customized kits to affected women, dignity kits for pregnant women, newborns, and other older females. Uh, adolescent girls and boys are also receiving dignity kits and other products tailored for those living with HIV. UNFPA has been deploying midwives and established a reproductive health center enabling women to give birth to three babies so far in West Java since the earthquake. Um, quick note on funding uh, from our friends at World Food Program and UN Refugee Agency. They're both warning today of an imminent cut to food assistance to crisis-impacted refugees in Chad unless urgent funding to bridge major funding shortfalls is received immediately. WFP needs $161 million by the end of the year to avert a suspension of its refugee assistance program and provide life-saving assistance to crisis-impacted communities in Chad, including 519,000 Sudanese and Central African refugees. The UN, UN agencies note that refugee communities in Chad already face severe malnutrition levels, with some areas seeing acute malnutrition rates of over 19 percent and chronic malnutrition at over 42 percent. The situation is expected to worsen without additional funding that would stem, stem the aid cuts. Starting in June of this year, WFP was forced already to provide half rations to refugees in other groups due to major funding shortages. WFPA and UNHCR are concerned that any further suspension of food assistance will have a severe impact on food security, nutrition, and protection of refugee communities, especially the most vulnerable. That includes children being pulled out of school, forced to work, or forced into marriage. Today is the International Day of Solidarity with the Palestinian people. In a message, the Secretary General notes that we commemorate the day in a time of diminished hope for peace. He says he's deeply saddened by the growing number of Palestinian civilians who've lost their lives in the spiral of violence engulfing the, uh, the occupied West Bank, and that each casualty fuels fear and yet more violence. The Secretary General urges all parties to take immediate steps to reduce tensions and break this deadly cycle. He emphasizes that the UN's position is clear. Peace must advance. The occupation must end. 
and he stresses that we are steadfast in our commitment to realize the vision of two states, Israel and Palestine, living side by side in peace and security, with Jerusalem as the capital of both states. Uh, the World Meteorological Organization today published its first state of global water resource report, which found that a large area of the globe recorded drier than normal conditions in 2021. It also showed that significant food events with numerous casualties were reported, among others from China, northern India, western Europe, and countries impacted by tropical cyclones such as Mozambique, Philippines, and Indonesia. In contrast, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia faced several consecutive years of below average rainfall, causing a regional drought. The report aims to provide a concise overview of water availability in different parts of the world to inform climate adaptation, mitigation investment, as well as the UN's campaign to provide universal access in the next five years to early warning of hazards such as floods and droughts. Uh, before we go to Dr. Nunez, Ms. Letterer. Uh, thank you, Steph. A couple of questions. First, um, NATO today made a commitment uh, for future uh, membership of Ukraine. Does the Secretary General believe that this could have an impact on ending the war in Ukraine? Uh, um, not for us to comment on what organization may expand their membership. Our focus right now remains on the work we're doing on the ground, which is humanitarian focused, especially uh, with the winter weather that is already uh, there in a number of parts of Ukraine. Um, on Ethiopia, mm -hmm. um, you said that aid was starting to get into mm -hmm. Tigray, mm -hmm. but apparently blackouts still exist throughout the region. Um, what is the UN trying to do to get electricity back? How concerned? Well, we're, how we're, concerning uh, is obviously it? without electricity, uh, it's extremely difficult to operate hospitals and other critical uh, supplies. We know that there has been a shortage of fuel uh, in Tigray and other parts of uh, of, uh, of Ethiopia. We very much hope that the we are in a on a positive trend in terms of uh, more supplies, whether it's humanitarian supplies or fuel, being able to reach, uh, reach Tigray. And finally, you announced this new system-wide yep. coordinator for famine relief, uh, Ms. Galani. Mm -hmm. Is that a new position? Yes, ma'am. It is a new position. It will be ba she will be based out of Nairobi. Margaret, and then we'll go to you. Okay, Edie asked my question on uh, the famine coordinator, but on uh, Tigray, um, any possibility the Secretary General might try and visit Tigray while he's in Ethiopia? No. Uh, he will be, uh, I mean, the reason he's going to Ethiopia are these annual uh, UNAU uh, talks. I mean, uh, you know, the Secretary General puts a lot of importance on the coordination between the UN and regional organizations, especially uh, with the African Union, given all the work uh, that we do throughout, uh, throughout the continent. They alternate from being held here to being held in Addis, where the AU is headquartered. Obviously, as I said, he will, since he's in Addis, he will meet uh, with Prime Minister Abiy and the President, but there is no plans for him to travel outside of the capital. But why not, really? I mean, he's for two years, he's been no. so involved and trying to get aid to Tigray. Now it's starting it's to just, go. Why not go and see? Well, I see? think there's, it is uh, not possible within the schedule. Also, there are a lot of logistical challenges to doing that during such a short uh, trip. But as you say, this is the, the, the humanitarian situation in Tigray has been a huge focus for us. But the focus of this trip is on the UNAU uh, relations. Deshi. Just a technical question uh, about the fertilizer initiative. In, in the statement, you said the fertilizer donation initiative is part of the agreements signed in Istanbul on mm -hmm. 22nd July to address global food insecurity. Mm -hmm. As far as I remember, there's no mentioning about the, the donation. I, if I remember correctly, when I, when I first realized this, it's actually on September 20th when uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin first said that there are... Uh, 
tons of uh, fertilizer stuck in EU ports, and he said he said the Ru Russian would like to donate those those fertilizers. Well, so I mean, how, it, how, how how to how to how to, I mean, just just help me to 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 understand this part why why it's a part of the the agreement. Well, because the, frankly, I think without uh, the active. Uh, and detailed work uh, that the UN has been doing, led on this part by Rebecca Greenspan, on working with the uh, with the U, uh, EU, with the European Union, and with the, the the US to ensure the facilitation of trade. This is part of facilitation of trade. The producers of this these fer uh, this fertilizer, which was already in European ports, have decided to give the fertilizers. Um, whether it's paid or a gift, it remains trade, and it's part of that overall trade. Uh, Stefano, I'll come back to you, Martin. Maggie. Thank you, Stefan. Um, first, is the Secretary General going to watch the soccer game, the World Cup game between? <laughs> and then there is a question. Is there later. a World Cup game involving a, a, Iran, a, a, uh, European, a European country that's borders on the Atlantic, that's next to Spain? No, of course he's of course he's happy for Portugal. But the point is, is he is he going to watch the game today? I don't think he will be watching the game today. He's leaving today, and his agenda is absolutely uh, chock okay, full. But I he's not he's not taking any time out to watch games. But I have that a question. I, I, have a quest his interest. I have a question about the World Cup. There is a, a source of the CNN that um, apparently. Um, the World Cup soccer team of Iran has been threatened with imprisonment and torture if the player failed to behave ahead of the match against the USA. This is was published. I, I have no, I, um, you know, I, I read, I saw that report. So the question this morning, is, I what is the question he is, uh, uh, does the Secretary General has been following the, the, the protest that has been around the, when Iran play to support the, the the protest of the, you know, that happening in, in Iran at the moment has been like uh, following this with interest. Well, of course, I mean the Secretary General has been speaking out very clearly on his position regarding the protests that have been going on in Iran. As to the report you you mentioned, on I mean I have no way to verify to to check the veracity or, or not of that uh, of that report, so I'm not going to comment on it. Margaret. Just to follow up on the fertilizer, mm -hmm. um, Steph, do you have any guidance that you can share with us in terms of putting that 260,000 tons into context, uh, how many farmers it could help or how many hectares of land it would that's fertilize? A very good, that's or, a very good question and one I should have asked myself. So okay. I will or how many to, ships it will take to carry it all? Well, I mean, this there's is one, one ship, ship with 20,000. Right. Is so it a I mean full the, ship, a half a ship? I don't know. That's, uh, it depends on the size of the ship. <laughs> Uh, but it will take a lot of uh, it will take a lot of ships. Uh, but we'll try to, to give you some context in terms of the impact. Yeah, no problem. That's what we're here for. 